am European Art Historian number one. Hello, I am European Art Historian number two. And today we will be talking about the life and artwork of the famous Northern Renaissance artist Peter Broidmoor the Elder. This painting is titled The Peasant Wedding and it was painted in the year 1567. This painting is a very true representation of peasant life, as the feast is located in a barn, and these plates here are carried on a door that's been just removed off its hinges. Over here you can also see some corn hanging from a rake that shows signs of harvesting, and the food is primarily bread, porridge, and soup, as was typical food for peasants of this era. Bruegel liked to represent peasant life because he believed that religious figures should not be represented as gods and, and shouldn't be represented like that in paintings, that you should idealize the human and specifically peasants because they lived very, uh, very, li very realistic lives for the time period that was occurring. This painting here is, is called The Triumph of Death. And as my friend, uh, European art historian number one mentioned before, Bruegel's work is, is very much about people and humanity and not so much about God and religious figures. So here is an obviously very uh, negative representation of the way the people lived of the time. We've got a bunch of figures who are skeletons, they're dead, coming back to wreak havoc on the living. So over here you can see uh, a skeleton riding on a horse pulling a cart full of skulls. Ugh and a skeleton attempting to murder somebody who's alive and somebody hanging from the gallows. And over here, it looks like what's going on is, is a sort of church service, but somebody's fallen off the side into the water. So, like I said, very ominous, and this painting can be found in the Prado in Madrid. This painting is titled The Landscape with the Form of Icarus. It was it was painted in the years of in the era of the 1560s, but the actual date of publication is unknown. This is an oil on canvas painting and represents a story in Greek mythology. The story is that there was a Greek god named Icarus who was told by his father not to fly towards the sun as his wings were made of wax and would melt. But he disobeyed his father and he flew towards the sun, melting his wings and falling into the ocean. And you can see down here in this bottom right corner, his legs flapping in the water as he's drowning in the ocean from disobeying his father, which is a moral that taught us to always obey your elders. Over here, you can see a shepherd is gazing towards the sky because he is absolutely amazed that a god has approached through the ether, also known as the mythological atmosphere, the, it's a, the outside of the world that they penetrate and come into the normal human world outside of their mythological, mystical world. And he's amazed to see that a god has approached and come so close to him. This work was unknown until brought to the Royal Museum of Fine Arts in Belgium in the year 1912, where it now resides. Winter landscape with a bird trap. This painting is titled Winter Landscape with a Bird Trap and was painted in the year 1565. Very similar to the previous painting, Landscape with the Fall of Icarus, it is also an oil painting. This once again shows Bruegel's love for painting peasants. As you can see here, there's peasants ice skating on their little rink that they've kind of just homemade themselves as it just freezed in the winter. And it's overlooking the city as they're located on the outskirts of town. He uses a winter scene to depict the cold, harsh winters of what was known as the Little Ice Age in the era that he himself grew up. He uses all the snow and the leaves that have fallen off the trees to exaggerate the cold, harsh winters that the peasants experienced. The painting was named after a certain image in the painting itself, where you can see this right here is the bird trap. He did this to show you that what was in the painting was very important and that it wasn't just a landscape that would serve as a backdrop for something else. He incorporated the painting into the title to show its true importance. This painting is called The Tower of Babel. Bruegel painted this for a wealthy citizen of Antwerp while he was a master in the Painters Guild. And then again, that is of course the Painters Guild, not the Royal Guild, not the Holy Guild, just a guild of masters who excelled at art. It's a very complex tower, very detailed, and seems to be modelled after the Colosseum in Rome, and that's because Rome is, of course, a lively city. It's the eternal city. The human figures in this work are dwarfed in comparison to the structure, and that's because it's so imposing, so glorious, so grand. The person in the foreground here is thought to be Nimrod, the man who ordered the construction of the tower, looking onto its building. This painting can currently be viewed in Vienna at the Kunst Story Shares Museum. 
this here is the. That's my telephone. Why did you know? We apologise for the interruption. We were interrupted by the telephone, and uh, European art historian number two ran to answer it, and European art historian number one followed us. She wasn't supposed to leave the program, so I'm a European art historian number three. And all uh, right, all right. So this is a little tower of Babel. It's a little bit different from the one before. It's clearly a little bit smaller. Uh, it's it's pretty ominous. There's all these clouds coming in, and and unlike the other one, there aren't any people in the foreground or in the background either. And we've got all this destruction going on on top, just like the other one, which is like uh, it's it's Bruegel saying that this is how it is and that's what happened. And he's not trying to put anything fancy on it, but just like the other one, it's very intricate and very detailed, and this one can be found in the Boymans van Boeningen Museum in Rotterdam. Bruegel actually painted another tower, a miniature, painted on ivory, but much to the despair of art historians like myself, this one has been lost, and uh, oh, we welcome back European art historians numbers one and two. Uh, goodbye. Hello again, this is European art historian number one, and I'm going to tell you a little about, a, a little about this painting titled Gloomy Day. This was painted in the year 1565 and is part of a series that depicts seasons and times of year. This particular painting is set in January, as represented by the leafless trees and the snowy caps on the mountains, and the bleak sky. The ominous sky over here, the ship against the shoreline, and the boys crouching down, is a representation of the harsh weather that is approaching. You can also note in the roughness of the water over here, that a storm is brewing. This painting is currently located in the Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna. Hello, this is European art historian number two, going to talk about one last painting called Netherlandish Proverbs. This painting here also goes by the name of the Blue Cloak and the Topsy Turvy World. In reality, this painting is quite big. It's about five feet wide by four feet tall, and it currently stands in the Staatliche Museum in Berlin. As you can see, this isn't a very happy painting, probably because these peasants, the lower class of the time, weren't very happy people. It's very interesting because it has representations of a lot of uh, Flemish proverbs of the time. I'm going to tell you about what some of those are. Up here you can see this man. He is he's gazing at a stock. The head is a little out of our window here, but he's gazing at a stock which means that he's wasting his time. This person over here, he is confessing to the devil, which means that he's revealing his secrets to the enemy. Ooh, Jesus. We've got a guy over here who's got some roses. He is casting roses before swine, just wasting his efforts where they won't be appreciated. And then of course these, these two dogs who are arguing over one bone, are obviously not going to agree. This is an interesting one that I quite like. This man over here, he's doing something that they called pissing against the moon, as my resources tell me, which means that he's wasting time on a futile endeavor. And he's also got a hole in his roof, which means that he's not very intelligent. And then of course there's this poor man over here who is barely able to reach from one loaf of bread to another, which means that he's trying very hard financially to make ends meet. Thank you very much for watching. Yes, thank you very much. We leave you with this self-portrait that Bruegel did of himself, and we hope you enjoyed this documentary. Toodles!